Uh, today, as you know, the club announced that it has acquired $1 million in guaranteed general allocation money plus a natural first round pick in the 2025 MLS Super Draft in exchange for goalkeeper Maxime Crepeau. The club will also receive conditional GAM if certain performance metrics are met and will retain a significant percentage of the fee if he is transferred abroad. Uh, today, to take your questions, we've got Axel Schuster, CEO and Sporting Director of Whitecaps FC. And uh, as usual, we'll just get straight to questions, but please queue up in the chat function uh, to do so. Um, we'll get started right now with Har. Go ahead, Har. Um, hi, Axel. It's a surprise to see you here today, but here we are. I was wondering if you could kind of tell us uh, the process of this uh, trade with Max. When did he come uh, to you uh, with this request and what was kind of your reaction and why was the club uh, willing to part with one of the best goalkeepers in Major League Soccer? Yeah, uh, that maybe takes me a little bit longer, but then I maybe also answer already a few of your questions. Thank you for the question, Har. And also I want to address at the beginning that it wasn't our way plan to come on that virtual meeting so late but uh, we had also to respect that uh, uh, MLS PR and also the other club was involved in this process before we could go out to release something um, so uh, after last season we we uh, contacted uh, we, we had our exit meetings with uh, all our players and we also and I also contacted almost every single agent of our players and uh, and we were starting uh, on, it was our idea to, to, to renegotiate with uh, a few of our key players of last year, new contracts to acknowledge their performance. Um, as you have seen, we have uh, finalized the first deal with Javain Brown and more to come in the next few days, weeks. In, definitely in preseason, we are, we are close to finish a few more. And while we were approaching, approaching Max and his agent, um, they made us aware of a very special personal situation uh, he was dealing with or is dealing with. And uh, they were telling us that um, to get that solved, uh, he uh, doesn't see any chance to prolong his contract. He doesn't even know how to get his problem solved if he stays in Vancouver. And um, this was nothing we, we have planned. There was no idea of trading him or selling him to, to somewhere. We are also not in need of GAM. We had already a huge amount of GAM on our bank account before that trade. So we are fully compliant. Um, but from, from this moment on, we never came to the point to negotiate and uh, even his agent just confirmed me that they go in an email that this has nothing to do with money, this whole deal. Um, that this has nothing to do about the contract, that, that this has only to do with this very special personal situation. And uh, so long story short here, at, from that moment on, we were discussing how we can help and uh, we uh, want to be an organization that is taking care of our players also beyond only the pitch. And uh, we don't want to be part of a problem. We want always to be uh, part of a solution. And uh, while we were continuing to, to, to discuss all of that, we had to find out that um, Max would have a hard time to return and that he would not feel good being here. Um, so that's also something that is important for us uh, because uh, he was our MVP. He was uh, best goalkeeper in the Western Conference, one of the best in the league. But would he be able to 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 uh, be the same or to come back and and to to uh, repeat what he did last year um, with all of that in mind? So we said that we are open to look, look for solutions, but only in case that uh, somebody acknowledge what Max means for us, not only as a player on the pitch, so also as a, as a leader in the locker room. So we said it has to be something that, that acknowledge that, and that leaves us back in a situation where we 
where we can continue to build this this organization and where we can continue to to build the next or uh, to develop the next step of our team so as you have maybe noticed or not we allowed max to not return to camp at uh, uh, last uh, last weekend um and um then things developed quite quickly in the last days um and we have been now at the point where max is by far the number one goalkeeper ever traded in the league by by the amount of gam that is transferred for that and he's a top 10 trade uh, in the history of this league so we got to a point where we think the value of max got acknowledged and um, that also leaves us now back uh, or leaves us now in a situation where we have the chance to to do other things than we were planning to do but obviously we also have to do them now and uh, it doesn't caught us now very by completely Need surprise. So we we started this process already a while ago, and uh, if I say what what to do with that, I mean not only speaking about the goalkeeper position, also about speaking about leadership, and also speaking about using that 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 uh, that rust, the, those roster spots and also the, the the financial possibilities we have to to re to replace Max with more than just a goalkeeper, we have to, to use our, now that possibility to make our squad uh, in wide stronger, stronger, not only on one position, um, to, be, to come out of that and to be in the next season a better, a better club, a better team, and can deliver better performance than we have done last year. Okay, I have one more because I know there's a long queue behind me. Uh, was LAFC his top place where he wanted to go? Were there any conversations with other MLS clubs to move him elsewhere? I know their uh, conference rival, you could be competing with them for a playoff spot. I can, at, at least I can say that LAFC has been the only club in the league that was able to give us what we were asking for to get a knowledge what Max means for us. Thank you, Har. Uh, my apologies, JJ. I missed you, so please go ahead. No, no worries, Tom. Uh, just to just to follow up there, uh, is it so? LAFC was the only suitor, or were there other MLS destinations that were possible? No, no other MLS destinations were really possible because uh, no other club would be able to afford Max. At least those, at least those who were looking for a goalkeeper were maybe at least interested in, in, in a trade. Right. Um, and since we we don't have a chance to talk to Max today, is there anything you could expand on in terms of his personal situation and what it would take for you know a, a person of his character to to want to leave this club and, and the city? I can tell you that he has shared with us uh, information far beyond uh, that what an employee normally shares with you, but I will be the last person speaking about that after he shared that with me. I can only say that it was, uh, big enough, serious enough, whatever the right word is, that we understood that we have to work on a solution together with him. Fair enough. Thank you, sir. And uh, last thing, just thoughts on, you know, having to face, you know, one of the top keepers in MLS inside your conference multiple times a year. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I I have to say, of course, uh, well, congratulations to LAFC. They get an excellent goalkeeper and that, that will help them to become better, of course. But uh, we have been in the last 17 games, the one of the top three teams in the Western Conference. We have now the possibility to do uh, several things to to also fill in or better uh, positions in our roster to become even better. Um, we feel very, very good with Thomas, by the way, and I don't want to, to miss on that because um, Thomas has much more experience at games played already than, than Max had when he arrived at this club. Thomas was a critical factor in, uh, in two years ago 
And if he would not have his concussion, he would have played much more games and he uh, helped us uh, in a lot of games. So I um, know that going into the last season, uh, at the beginning, uh, there was even discussions who will start in the first game against Portland. Um, Max coming out of an injury and Thomas. Unfortunately, Thomas uh, had to miss also part of the preseason still of his, because of his concussion. So Thomas was always uh, very high. We were always very high on Thomas. And uh, Yusuf is very high on Thomas. And uh, we want now back up Thomas and, and help him with, with all our support to, to uh, make him to one of the top three goalkeepers in Canada um, and, and making him uh, uh, or providing him the chance and the platform to, to go to the World Cup at the end of the year. Thanks, sir. Thanks, JJ. Uh, Michael McCall, go ahead, please. Hey, Axel, just a, a couple of quick ones from me. What was the urgency for, for getting this deal done? Max is obviously going to be away for a couple of weeks with the, the national team. You talked about there was no other teams that were maybe willing to pay what LAFC were paying. But obviously, things can move fast. New England Revolution's been rumoured to be losing their goalkeeper today. They might be then in the market. Why was the urgency to get this done now? Could you not have waited a couple of weeks to see if somebody would maybe match LAFC's offer? First of all, we wanted to get it solved because uh, we also have to make decisions. So uh, it's not like that LAFC would wait, that there's a guarantee that LAFC will wait forever because there was also some form of a deadline by LAFC because if we could not commit to something, they would have to solve their problem because they need a goalkeeper. So it isn't that we haven't checked in with, with, other, uh, with other clubs and we have checked in about other possibilities, but, uh, and, and also the one you mentioned, but uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't even close. Um, the, 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 the offers would, haven't been even close, or uh, the possibilities those clubs had, because you also need a club that has this amount of game, because uh, it's even different if you can go for a and buy somebody into maybe a DP spot or a U22 spot, or if you have to trade for somebody in the league because uh, you have to pay with scam and not every club has that amount of scam available. So long story short, um, yes, we could wait longer, but um, LAFC would maybe sign somebody else and nobody else comes up. And then we would sit here with the problem because it isn't, and once again, it wasn't about we want to sell the player it wasn't about we want to find the best offer and we have, uh, we, if not, then if nobody's paying what we're asking for, then he just has to stay here. Uh, we had to get to a good solution for us, for Max, and, um, and also to give us enough time to do now the right things with, with what we got. Looking ahead then, I mean, you, you spoke very highly of Thomas Hassau there, Evan Newton's a, a keeper that I think is an excellent keeper as well. Are you looking to strengthen the goalkeeping position? Are you looking to bring another keeper in to challenge Thomas and Evan? Or do you feel you're going to be happy with what you've got right now? So for now, we, we uh, see Thomas Hassau in the starting position. Um, so he is and was our natural number two, and he has played last year already all the games. So he is the guy we are backing up and where we are way high on. I know that he was uh, in the run to be Canada's number three, four for the Olympic to uh, qualification tournament, but he had his, his injury, so he couldn't play there. So we want now with him being fully ready and, and having already played again games last year, Yusef uh, uh, wants to prepare him very well. But of course, I uh, um, spoke about that for every single position, uh, uh, challenge, to be get challenged and having concurrency is important. Um, but it, it has also to be the right fit and it has to, 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 to fit into the group. Uh, goalkeepers are always a very special group because it's a very small 
unique group that sticks together. So also the atmosphere in that has to be has to has to be very good. So um, I'm I'm definitely um, uh, I'm I'm no I'm definitely sure. No, we we will definitely look at that, and uh, we will also um, uh, sign somebody into this group. But uh, it's nothing where we where we feel now we very, very very rushed or urgent or pan we are not panicking at that because with Thomas we have our number one and we now have to find the right exact right fit to that a player that can play but that is also challenging the guys and I always say it's always also important if you if you come to build your uh, your roster in that way that uh, you don't run into into atmospheric problems especially on that position if somebody at the end doesn't play so it has to be the right fit we're working on that we have some ideas but uh, nothing we we need a solution by tomorrow because we have isaac new uh, we have isaac here who has played a few few games or has played in in the cpl last year and has been already on number three we have uh, Ms. Max Anchor, a very good young talent here. So we have for every single training, three guys here that have already trained also in the past with the first team. So, and the, the season starts 26th of February. And until that, we will have our group together. Thanks, Axel. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Josh Griffith, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Excuse me. Bit by this decision, and with the the chemistry that the team has developed to end the twenty twenty one season, do you think that this is going to be a problem to start twenty twenty two, or do you think that the internal competition that you've already had, like you mentioned with with Thomas Lasalle and Evan Newton, is is going to be enough to replace a keeper like Max? No, it is not enough to replace a keeper like Max. So as I said, we we have to use the camp. We have to use the roster spots uh, to do the right things, and we have to do far more than just replacing a spot on the goalkeeper position and, and having the right group there together. Um, but I also want to say that you can all trust that our, at least our senior players knew and know about Max's special situation. And it could have also it could have also a very negative impact to our crew if we as a club would not support and be seen as somebody who understands this special situation and and wants to be part of them as a solution because of course players could think how do we, how will they treat me if I have a problem at some point in the future so I think it is also way very much acknowledge and uh, appreciate from the group that we stand up as an organization that way and that we take care um, uh, uh, about our players. So I think uh, in general, the atmosphere, uh, I am not, I'm not worried about. I'm here and we have trained a few days. The atmosphere is really good. The level of training is good. Um, we, we have a lot of uh, young guys here that are showing up the first time or that are coming back from injuries or a guy like Pedro uh, who had never the chance to really compete for something. It's now our job to, to do the things right. And, um, I think we have proven in the past that uh, we take our time until we get to exact the right, uh, to the right situation, chance or opportunity and we will take them. I, you, can, you can be sure that we have been aware of the whole situation and we are preparing for that already since a while. And uh, we are just still in the first week. We had, I think, three sessions, not more than that. And uh, we, will, we will follow up on that and you will, you will hear from us soon um, with, with next steps that we take and next, next decisions we do and how we improve the quality of our roster. Obviously, with respects to Maxine Kripo and his family and his situation, will things be coming out down the line as you, the, the organization and him and his family deem it necessary? Sorry? Uh, are, we, are we going to hear like more about what 
has transpired in the background of this situation with Max, or is it just a personal thing that he's going to keep with him and his family respectfully? Uh, just wondering about, about that. So I, I really don't feel comfortable to comment on anything what, what the exact, or more than the fact that it was a very special, or it is, a, is what it was, is a very special situation. Um, and that I know enough to, to make that decision to support him in that moment, uh, although it wasn't what we are, were looking for and wasn't uh, and isn't something that uh, makes us all happy today. The only thing that makes us happy that we could find a solution for somebody uh, like Max, who is a very great person, who has helped the club, has, has, has uh, helped us last year as an MVP of our team. And we think that we have done the right thing in the long term. In the short term, definitely, it, uh, it creates problems for us. But we also like to, to get challenged. We feel challenged since, since I arrived in this club. I think um, everywhere this club got challenged in the last two years, uh, as also through the COVID situation. So we want to use this challenge and uh, I think there is that there's always two possibilities. Uh, you can you can use a challenge as an excuse and say everything is so difficult, or you can see that as a chance. And we want to be seen as an organization, and we ourselves want to challenge us to use that as a chance to to do the right decisions, and to in the mid and long term to get something better out of it. With all respect to Max, but uh, to get something better out of it for us as an organization in, in long term. Awesome, Michael. Thank you so much for the information and clarification today. Thanks, Josh. Uh, Gemma, go ahead, please. Hi, Axel. Obviously, this amount of GAM gives you a lot of possibilities, a lot of potential. Can you talk about where, uh, what kind of areas you could, uh, you might be looking at to uh, fill with this money? I'm a little bit careful with that because every player uh, got more expensive today. So uh, I already got a few calls and the messages that uh, that uh, the prices we are negotiating at, on the other end are, are far below now the, the expectations because we set a new standard. Um, yes, we we have areas we have areas. Uh, we we are still monitoring the guys that we have here and. We are also looking at, at their performance coming now back. And we had also a few uh, challenges last year with injuries, players not always being ready, or I say, speak about the Peter Vita situation. We have a lot of young players on a few positions. We, when he's also trying some new things. So it's hard to, to give you now more information than that in general, we want to use all of that to, to strengthen uh, our squad on various positions. Um, a, I would say be curious, it also still depends maybe on, uh, on a few offers we have on the table for, for other players, um, because you, you want, as I said, to get the decisions done right. And um, it's... Um, it's uh, not that we feel we would have an urgency on any position, but we in general have a good feeling where we could grow uh, as a club and where we could grow on the pitch. If we would get a little bit more experience, if we would get a little bit more of quality, um, but it's not, it's not, I don't want, I also don't want to share too much because we are in negotiations at some point and uh, we are also, we are also trying to, to not play with open cards in every of our negotiations and, hey, hello, that's great. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's better to speak about things when they are done than to speak about things while we are in negotiations. Sorry, someone came home from daycare in the middle of your answer. So um, You've touched a little bit of, on Max. Can you talk a little bit about what he's meant to this team over the last three years and uh, why the club will miss him so much. Sorry? I'm wondering if you can just talk about what Max has done for this team over the last three years and uh, kind of his legacy with this club. I think 
Max, Max has uh, been, uh, uh, especially in the last year, because in the first year, my first year, uh, I thought he was injured for a long period of time. Uh, but in the last year, he obviously was uh, 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 a key factor for our success also. Uh, in, and we had a few games where um, he, he saved us. If I only look at the game against Dallas in the last minute, he saves the penalty. So we know how close the race was at the end. So um, and we know that every point counts at the end. So there are, there are a lot of moments that I have, keep in mind where he had a huge impact to get to those points that brought us in over the line and into the playoffs. But um, he was also uh, a spokesperson in the locker room and he was uh, somebody who, who was, a good, uh, was a good, calm, analytical, and, and uh, not too emotional factor in the locker room in all the ups and downs. And you also need that, somebody who is uh, staying on the bottom in, in either direction the, the club is going, if it is in, in our highs and downs. So I say, again, we have huge trust in Thomas and we had no problem to play Thomas at any single game where we had to play him or where we played him. Um, we also have to, to, um, to, to um, replace Max as a, as a leader in the locker room. And that's something we, we are working on right now. And um, I have to say thank you to Max. Um, and although this end was surprising and came in a moment where we didn't want it, it to come, uh, it's still, I have to say thank you, and uh, there is not anything between us that, uh, that creates problems or keeps us with problems or with any negative uh, emotions. Uh, I wish him the very, very best, where he was an important factor for our success, and not only as a goalkeeper on the pitch, and, and there are a lot of moments that I will keep in mind, because every point mattered last year. And, and if we only think uh, back to the Dallas game uh, where he saved the penalty last minute. So, uh, but also as a, as, a, as a character in the locker room, somebody who, who always stayed on the bottom in all our highs and downs and who was also um, correcting things in the locker room sometimes. So I wish him all the best. Um, I, first and foremost, I wish him that he can solve and he gets out of, of his special situation uh, soon. And then I, I wish him also the way best uh, as a player. And I hope that he makes it to the World Cup and is the start of Canada. Um, he, he, should, uh, he should perform outstanding for LFC other than in the games against the Vancouver Whitecaps. I'm absolutely... So absolutely welcome if he do all his failure in his future career always against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Great, thank you, and thank you for your patience, everyone. Um, according to my notes, Manuel, you're up. Yeah, thanks, and hi, Axel. How's it going? Um, yeah, my question, my first question is, I, I just ask you for a little bit of clarity about this. Is um, without you saying what it was. But did Max want to go to LAFC or did he want to leave Vancouver? Yeah, it's a combination of both. Uh, it, 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 so yeah, I don't want to share more about this problem, but, but, but he had to leave Vancouver to solve his problem. And it wouldn't be exclusively LAFC to solve the problem. Right, so then to I guess, yeah, I don't want to go into Madum too much because I know you probably can't share it, but I'm really curious then about what your last 24 hours were like, because this breaks, um, you know, East Coast reporters break the story out of nowhere, um, catch all of us out West here by surprise. Um, how long have you been working on this deal? When did Max come to you? And what were the last 24 hours like for you and the club with all with this whirlwind? You know, breaking out of nowhere. 
the last 24 hours have, have been really difficult because the leak caught us all uh, um, at a way bad moment because we the, the trade wasn't done. So I can also tell you that uh, still last things were still negotiated between us. So and uh, and we couldn't speak. So we knew all that it is hard to explain that without speaking to you. Well, we couldn't speak. First of all, the trade wasn't done. Second, secondly, we had to respect uh, that um, publishing something or releasing press releases and having such uh, such uh, virtual meetings like this also needs the league to to confirm things and approve things. So uh, the last 24 hours, I felt not very good because uh, I got so many questions and I couldn't reply to them. And sorry for those who reach out to me directly that I couldn't share more than than uh, than I have. Um, um, we were planning to get all of that ready and done and then to get out with the right message and with the real message uh, the first moment you get notice of that. So that was a little bit difficult. That was very difficult. Um, the situation, as I said, uh, came, up, came up in the off season um, while we were discussing the future of Max. And not because we were discussing the future, so it wasn't. It, we we never get to the point to discuss the future of Max and this club because he shared all these informations with us. I think um, it uh, there was no solution at that point. So um, the the LAFC story, or to get closer to a solution with a club that was able and open to acknowledge with its offer, with, with the offer, the value Max has, that started to get more concrete 10, 14 days ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really curious because you, of course, have the experience of working in Germany in the Bundesliga, whereas a club, you have far more control over sort of writing the narrative. How frustrating is it for you then when you're working on something like that and as a club in a single entity league, you sort of lose control because something gets leaked three time zones away, 5,000 kilometers away. How frustrating can that be for you? In general, it's not frustrating because in general, I, I, I know the business and also in, in Europe, things get leaked at some point and it's sometimes it's, it's also uh, in, in, this league's not always easy to to be always up to speed at the same moment something gets leaked because uh, you need things signed and you need things fixed before you really can speak about it because uh, you cannot go out and say we have a deal and then uh, you you have spoken about the deal and it isn't signed and then the other club said oh, by the way uh, we did a mistake uh, we wanted to pay less that was a wrong number so you, I, I had this complaint from my media departments in the German clubs as well, where they said, hey, everyone is already speaking about the deal and we cannot publish something because if you publish something on your web page, then it is always uh, uh, the, 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 the fixed deal or that you can only do that if something is really concrete. But in this case, it was a little bit more frustrating because we all knew that this is a very complicated story that would need more uh, and the story needs more or you need more background to understand the story to deliver this message again than to our supporters and all the people interested in this sport in this league and it was frustrating for that reason because uh, the moment it got leaked yesterday evening i knew that it will be very hard to to really um tell the story in the right time and the story will go all over the place before people really understand what is behind that. So again, I was really frustrated about that. I didn't felt good. A lot of guys in the organization didn't felt good about that, but it's also something we have to accept and something we can correct now. And uh, I, I, I hope and believe and trust that, that we all now at, are at the place that, that everyone understands and that everyone can now 
um, deliver or, or publish the rights, the, the, the story as it is. Yeah, thanks for taking the time today. And hopefully we get to speak soon in person. That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks, Manuel. Uh, we'll wrap up now with Michael McCall. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, Axel, just one thing I just wanted to raise. Now, obviously, this is a bumper deal. And in MLS terms in general, it's a bumper deal for a goalkeeper. It's it's a blockbuster deal in, in MLS terms. But when you look at the breakdown of it, it does feel disappointing that the GAM is spread out over so many seasons and you're only getting the bulk of that in a couple of seasons time, potentially. What was behind that breakdown? Because personally, it feels like it devalues the deal a little bit. Now you can also see it the other way around, because as I said, it would be that if he would need, be in need of GAM, but we had already uh, a huge amount of GAM on our bank account, <laughs> MLS bank account, before that deal, and GAM can also expire. So, and you can pull forward GAM, as you maybe know. So, um, so we have the full flexibility to use all of that money if you would need to, but we were more running into an issue that maybe at one point our GAM will expire because we, we are not even using all of that at once. We have an open DP spot, as you know, so to, to backfill, so we would not even use GAM to fill that spot. So long story short, we, we, I think this deal keeps us even more flexible, the deal is even better for us, because if we would be in need of GAM, you can pull forward future GAM into, into your actual account. So if we need, we can do that. If we don't need, we have no issue with expiring GAM. Okay, thanks for the clarification. You're welcome. Thank you, Michael, and thanks everyone for joining us this afternoon. If you got any follow-ups, just please let us know. And Axel, appreciate your time today. You're all welcome. Thank you for having me.